So it is nice to see everybody, those in real time here for the Labor Day special and maybe some make my recording work, seeing this at another time. Um, but we are going to start seated and just make a transition. So whatever is comfortable cross-legged or feet out in front, I thought maybe just a little bit of movement um, to begin with. So uh, whatever the position with your legs is that feels best, we'll just take a few circles and make a transition from perhaps a busy morning or a busy weekend or thoughts in your brain for what's going on later this week or today. Just coming to this moment here and now. And we'll take the circles the other way. Just take some deep breaths here. And then speaking of the breath, we'll deepen the breath, coming back to center and reaching up, breathing in. Gently fisted hands, if you care to take them, tuck the chin just a little bit as you breathe out. And you can do this kind of slowly, breathing in, breathing out. Let's hold the lifted position. And then just one more move here, and it's kind of early on for this, so see how you feel from the lifted arms, just bend. And I showed this the other day, we're just gonna kind of pump the arms back, okay? So you can have the hands sort of relaxed, you can gently fisted hands, and just feel the shoulder blades squeezing together. So this is a good counter move if you've been rounding forward a little bit with activities of any kind. Good. And then just finally here, one hand to the floor, reach up and over. And then to the other side. And then we will begin to center ourselves. So we'll take all 10 fingertips to the earth. And in this uh, early phase of September, it's been a bit windy here in Tucson. So just let those fingertips touch the solid ground. You can soften the gaze or close the eyes. Begin to attune to the breath. Feel that solid earth beneath you. Nice chance to ground and center. And whenever you feel like it, bring the hands to the knees or thighs, and we'll just stay with the breath here. And if it is a day when you feel a little spaced out or airy or whatever it may be, you can just keep the gaze on the floor. That sometimes helps to help uh, keep us present and focused. And we'll let the belly relax, we'll let the shoulders relax, we'll soften the face. And just that little scan of our bodies, noticing how we're feeling uh, for many of us on a Monday here in September. And if you uh, notice anything that you're experiencing and you need to modify, of course, you're free to do that. You can add more if you want a more active practice. And we'll take that moment to lift the hands to consider an intention or affirmation. Different ones have been coming to me lately. Um, I had a feeling, a thought of encouragement <laughs> of late, and uh, you know, I'll just mention that as, a, as an idea, an intention, almost like you're talking to a good friend or family member, like, good job, <laughs> it's going great, <laughs> encouragement, just maybe that would relate to optimism, of course, it could be something like flexibility, peace, strength, compassion, whatever resonates. And our intention set, big breath in, hands up overhead and down to the heart. Let's take that again, inhale and exhale. And I do think would stretch the legs out. So a couple of the moves that I'm gonna do on our backs this morning, we have done recently, but um, they just felt like good ones to kind of bring into the uh, little um, repertoire that we have of different warm up poses. So we'll come down with care, put a pillow under your head if you need one. Let's start with a full body stretch, just reaching through the arms and legs, wiggling fingers and toes. A couple deep breaths, and then bring one knee in towards the chest, just kind of hang out here, drawing the thigh in towards the rib cage. And we'll take the other leg in, a couple breaths. And just bring one in and one leg in and then the other. And I can go nice and slow with this or speed it up. Sometimes, you know, lifting the head, tucking the chin is interesting. We'll take this into our gentle twist. And remember, as a warm up, we just want to be mindful. So the leg is bent, it's going over to the opposite side of the mat, but you'll decide if you want to 
take the foot all the way to the floor or not. And if you're taking your, uh, I'm just happy to take my left leg over to the right. So I'm gonna reach my left arm up and away, maybe even add a little weight onto the thigh just to deepen the stretch a little bit more. And we'll come back to center and we'll just take the twist to the other side, whichever side is your second side, same idea, be mindful just to go slowly to make sure things are feeling okay. And then if you can move around your furniture and your puppy dogs and such, <laughs> extend your arm opposite to the direction that the leg is going. Maybe that little extra weight with your hand to the thigh. Deepen the stretch. And come back to center, bring the knees in towards the chest and lift the arms and legs, do a little freestyle movement here. And a move that we have done recently, which I am going to repeat, is the one with the legs bent, the arms along by our sides. You kind of settle yourself here and, and kind of uh, be aware of your uh, core muscles because we'll be using those for these next couple moves. So with the feet flexed, legs bent, we're just going to go out and then back. And this is a little bit like um, a weight machine. Some of you may have done at the gym where you're sitting there and there's resistance as you pull the legs wide. Um, here, there's obviously no resistance, but you can almost imagine like there's a rubber band or something between the legs creating some tension. You can go slowly or a little faster with this. Use the tummy strength to keep the hips and pelvis pretty stable. Keep breathing. <laughs> okay, and then we're gonna take it into this one. We're gonna extend one leg straight out a few inches above the floor and then back. Okay, and second side. So I'm keeping my feet flexed. I'm engaging the tummy so there's no strain on my back and I'm not moving too quickly with this. Steady breath. <laughs> Takes a little concentration. Okay, and then finally we'll do what I call the toe touches. And you can start with one foot going forward and down, touching the toes down to the floor. And then other side, if it feels manageable, you can take both feet down at the same time. Okay, so slightly forward and down. Somewhere around maybe five or six rounds here. And then we'll finish up, bring the feet to the floor. We'll take our bridge pose, so pressing up a little bit or higher still. Now, if you do have your yoga block and you want to put it under your back, that's kind of a nice possibility. Otherwise, roll the shoulders back, maybe interlace the hands behind your back. Kind of adjusting the head here so the neck feels comfortable. It should be a good stretch to the neck. Nice elongation. And any other variation, you could lift off the heels. You could come down and try lifting off of the toes. <laughs> A little more awkward there to get the toes lifted off the mat, but kind of activates the front of the lower legs. And a couple more deep breaths, pressing the hips up a little higher, breathe in. And as you breathe out, lower down slowly. Hug the knees in towards the chest, we'll rock a little bit. And we'll come back up to seated and you could come over to one side or rock right on up. Take a couple seconds here to recalibrate. <laughs> And as you feel you've adjusted to this new position, we'll do a couple things with the legs out front. So let's start here just with some circles, the feet a little bit wider than the hips, hands to the knees, just going around a couple times one direction, a couple times the other way. And we'll do a little archery practice here. We've done this recently, but I think it's always useful pulling one arm up and back. So I'm just keeping my legs in this kind of neutral position, the feet out in front, legs bent. About three rounds, pulling that arm back and releasing. I'm gonna have us hold here. Okay, so you can look up towards the top hand, you can circle the hand a little bit and you'll just kind of check in with how it feels to get this chest opening stretch with a little bit of a twist in. And then we'll come to center, we'll do the other side. So pulling that arm up and back about three times. Okay. And then we'll hold the lifted position. And same as before, you can look up towards the hand that's lifted, you can circle it, take those deep breaths. We feel pretty uh, quickly the 
sense of the kind of pull in the front of the shoulders there because those muscles usually get tight on us. Let's come back to center. We'll take one round of the wave, bringing the feet a little closer together. Inhale and exhale. Okay, now again, a bit of a repeat from something we've done somewhat recently. We're going to do the bobbing boat, <laughs> but I have a, a little actually something else to add to this. So the bobbing boat is with the heels to the floor, the toes pointing up, and we don't want to be like this. We want to kind of lift the chest, engage the tummy, and then we're going to bob like the little boat on the bay. And uh, I was thinking about maybe how to add a little more intensity to this. Um, so you could lift one heel off the floor and bob in this fashion. And if you don't care for this, you can do a traditional boat instead. But if you're lifting one foot, try bringing that foot down with the other. Okay, so I feel the heel to the floor gives a bit of stability for the bobbing back and forth motion. It would be hard to do this with both feet lifted. Okay, but just for those who may not want to be bobbing the whole time, let's just take a couple seconds here, traditional boat. Breathe in, breathe out. We'll take the feet to the floor. We'll take an upward table, pressing up a little bit or higher still. And you can always add variations here or take a Palabhati breath. I'm just going to hold it kind of uh, straightforward fashion here this morning. Lower down, breathe in, breathe out, and just finally staff or stick pose. And this would be one where you want to adjust the hips a little bit to level the pelvis. And again, I like to flex the feet to activate the legs, engage the core, and why don't we go ahead and press through the palms, and we'll just hold here with our sort of propping up the sky gesture, but I'm holding, I'm not um, bending and straightening the arms today. Okay, release the hands, palms can face towards one another. Relax the face, breathe in, and breathe out, bring the fingers down to the earth, roll the shoulders. Give the legs a little shake, and then we'll come along onto our knees. And although it's been kind of windy, and maybe that makes me think I shouldn't do this, <laughs> I'm going to do it anyway. We'll have a little flying cow here. So as you get onto the knees, flying cow, you'll remember is fluttering the arms. And just a good chance to feel that we're moving away, anything tight, tense, uncomfortable, unnecessary, bringing in what's clear and positive to our spheres of being. And then we'll bring the hands down to the floor. And let's just take a second or two here, spreading the fingers wide. And we'll have the possibility of going right into our first downward dog. And you can always do a forearm down dog or child's pose instead. And just taking a little time, I do usually start with walking the dog, pressing one heel and then the other towards the floor. And you could always kind of um, hang out with one leg bent, one leg straight for a little bit to get a little bit more of a stretch in the lower leg. And then we'll go into our plank pose flow. And this is what we do pretty regularly here on Zoom Yoga. <laughs> Forward and back, down dog to plank. Three times usually I find to be effective. And the last round here, those who may want to hold plank a little longer can do so. So we'll just have a couple seconds, shoulder blades gliding down the back and the body nice and straight and strong. And down to the knees and let's come up, take a V for victory. Now I'm gonna adjust my screen just a tiny bit here. I've been doing this set pretty regularly, and if some of you don't care for it, I apologize that we've been doing it a lot, but uh, maybe for some of you, you haven't done it um, at all or for a while. So I'm just going to go through this again. This is for the upper middle back. We're going to make gently fisted hands. It's for the shoulder joints also, and this was called the robot move. <laughs> One arm down and then the other. Okay. And then this is holding the world in the palm of our hand. So I'm going to show you I'm not doing this. I'm trying to keep the spine long. I'm going to squeeze the shoulder blades together. Okay, So my palms are lifted. My hands are open. I'm squeezing. And I'm going to relax. And we do that one more time. Squeeze the shoulder blades. You can't see them, so it's funny. It's like I'm trying to think about them so I really can <laughs> feel that they are engaging and doing the work I'm wanting them to do. Okay, now this one's a little tricky. We'll come up and palms together. If it works for you, bring the hands behind your head in kind of a reverse prayer. Again, I'm not doing a back bend. I'm really focusing on stretching the upper arms and shoulders here. 
Keep breathing. And then we finish this as if we're hugging a big round boulder. <laughs> so big round rock in front of you, you're giving it a hug, tuck your chin a little bit, broaden the muscles of the back. And then come back up, interlace the fingers, press through the palms, open wide, flutter the fingers, and then we'll just do a couple relaxed shoulder rolls. And so that's a little bit of a maintenance set. You can do it standing, seated, or as we've been doing here, kneeling on the ground. And we'll come back. Um, let's just do one downward dog here. You could do a forearm down dog or a child's pose instead. Just to kind of stretch ourselves out again. You can turn the toes in a little bit, do a pigeon toe down dog if you want to. And then we'll come back down to the knees and we'll take a set that many of you know pretty well, extending one arm, doesn't matter which, I'm doing my right arm first, but we're just gonna pull that arm back, circle up and around three times. And after the third round, we'll hold the arm framing the head. We'll take the leg on the opposite side long. So I have my right arm and my left leg. I mentioned when doing this with younger kids, most of them tend to put the arm and leg on the same side <laughs> into an extended position. And then it's really hard to balance and I have to go around and try to adjust everybody. But we get used to this after a while, working opposite sides. Great, we'll come down. We'll do everything to the second side. So extending your arm, pulling that arm back, as you see the hips back, circling up and around. About three times. Just a nice fluid movement here. And then we hold. So we're framing the head with our arm, taking the leg on the opposite side back. And really just kind of finding our center here, that nice stable, steady position. Couple more seconds. Okay. And then bringing the hand and the knee down and we'll just open one arm. We're not doing thread the needle, but I like the stretch opening up, coming down, other side and down. Now I thought today would actually do a little bit of work on the floor on our side and on our stomachs. So to get there first, maybe you'd wanna come onto your forearms and do a forearm down dog just because <laughs> I don't do these as regularly and I think some people like them. Um, you can take a little time here. You could bend the legs, lift the heels or press both heels towards the floor. Now, as I said, we are gonna come down to the floor. So if you can manage to sort of move the feet back or wiggle the elbows forward, you can come on down to your forearm plank and hold this as long as you care to. It'll be our transition to get onto our stomachs. Yes, I know everybody loves their forearm plank. <laughs> Maybe not everybody, but at least it's kind of a little more gentle on the joints than the traditional plank. When you're ready to come down, just take your time, lower down. We'll take a couple seconds here, just supporting our head. Maybe bending the legs, windshield wiping the feet. And so a couple different things here on the, um, floor first on our sides and then we'll come back to our stomachs. So I wanted to just have you come on over to one side and we'll take the position here where we're on our forearm today. So shoulder pretty much over the elbow. The legs are going to be bent and a heads up you need a little room in front and behind. So if you're practicing next to somebody or you have animals or furniture, <laughs> be a little bit aware of your surroundings. Uh, this is the one where the top leg is going to just swing forward and back. So I'm doing this instead of the low lunge this morning, just to kind of work the hip flexors and get a good little stretch in in a different fashion than the low lunge. And if you do have room, you can straighten your leg and swing it back and forth like so. I really don't have room with the wall and the <laughs> furniture, but just to show you that. Okay, so I'll just keep it going a little bit longer, whichever version you're taking. And then you could, if you want to, take the foot back, reach around. If you can get a hold of it, you can do a little bit of a deeper stretch, kind of a little bit of a back bend. If you draw the heel in towards your backside, you get a little bit more of a quadricep stretch. Okay, we'll come down. Now we're just actually going to go to the second side for what we just did. So we'll come on to our stomachs, take a little breather if you need to. And I'm going to turn around so I'll be facing the screen still. If you don't have a good view of the screen, no worries. It's the same thing we just did. 
So you'll come to your second side, you'll be on your forearm and your legs are bent and you start with the knees stacked. And then that top leg is just gonna swing forward and back. Okay, so watch out for people, furniture, pets, etc. cetera. <laughs> they get a little momentum going. And you could have a straight leg if you care to. Again, watch out for furniture. We don't want any collisions here. I'm gonna keep the leg bent. Okay, and then we'll have the possibility of taking the leg back, holding onto the ankle or the foot, and you can press the foot into the hand or pull the heel in towards your backside. So whatever feels interesting as a stretch for you. Okay. And then we'll just come back onto our stomachs. And I'm gonna do something here that we have not done for a while, but since we've done some chest opening stretches already today, we should be good to go. And it will be scorpion pose, but I'll give you a pause here to begin with. So that same movement, maybe windshield wiping the feet or just taking a nice couple deep breaths, feeling the solid earth beneath you. So for a while now, I've been showing some modifications of the uh, scorpion position. I learned it with the arms extended kind of to a T shape and that's how I'll show it in a moment. But you could also bring the forearms to the floor. Again, watch out for furniture here <laughs> and um, take one leg up, bend the toes, bring the foot over to the opposite side and come back and down, okay? So this is a little bit of a different kind of feel than the um, traditional scorpion pose, but it takes some weight off of the chest and it just may be a little more manageable for some people. And then you could come down a little lower and have sort of a swaro cactus arm position. This is sort of the middle range of intensity. Okay, so same idea, one foot up, the toes point, little scorpion tail there. And then I'll show the full version, which I really wanted to do. I haven't done it yet myself, but I've been thinking about it. So arms to a T, and then I'm gonna come up and over with my left foot, and I'm gonna turn my gaze to the left as my left foot goes to the right. Okay, so here you'll feel a kind of deep sort of pressing of the um, shoulder into the earth. Make sure that feels okay. And you can hold each side for a little bit or go side to side as I was showing with the first two versions. Okay, so sometimes I like to just hold this and kind of ah, hang out and notice what I notice, feel what I feel. And then I'm just gonna do a couple more rounds going at a little faster pace side to side, not holding quite as long. Okay, scorpion pose. <laughs> it's good to get back to this from time to time, I think. All right, you can do a few more rounds or stay longer on each side if you want to. When you feel complete, just come back, maybe support your head, your chin, or your um, head can turn to one side, but just let your body adjust. And then we will be coming up and back to child's pose. So you can press up carefully, take the knees nice and wide. And um, just because we've had the arms out wide, it might feel nice to have the arms along by your sides here with the uh, head coming down to the floor for your child's pose position. And take a few nice deep breaths. Just feel this familiar position of the body, which is calming and restful and grounding. Okay, we're gonna come up to standing now. We have not done quite as much plank pose work as we sometimes do in the practice today. So I'll give you time, we'll do a downward dog or come up from table or a low squat. But if you do want a more active practice, you can go back and forth to down dog a little bit. Um, if you're watching this as a recording, you can always pause the video and add more if you want to. We'll just hang out in down dog. And then looking towards the top of the mat, step or hop the feet forward and a very mindful reverse swan dive to come up with care as I adjust the screen. So why don't we take just a couple moments here. We'll do Kapota Mudra. That's the mudra of the dove, the mudra of peace. The hands are cupped a little bit. And you can just feel your heartbeat, feel the warmth of the body. Come back to your intention if you have one, and it may possibly be an intention of peace for some of us today. That's always a nice intention, in fact. And we'll bring the hands down. 
Sorry, I have one more little adjustment to make here. And then we're gonna do our hip circles. So we'll start with our familiar hands to the hips, feet a little wider than hip width apart to circle one direction. And we'll circle the other way. Okay, so I started doing this on my little morning walk today. I don't know if anybody saw me, but I'm gonna finish the circles and we'll lift the arms, just kind of give your hands a shake and then interlace your fingers. And do you remember the twizzler or the swizzler? <laughs> and all I can say is don't think too much about it. Just kind of circle away with the arms lifted, the hips going. And if you can reverse and go the other direction. Okay, gets everything moving, <laughs> everything stretched out. We'll come back and we'll do one more move for the hips. So this is the one, if you've done Zumba already today, maybe you've done this movement. <laughs> I call it the, I don't know what, the Zumba hip tilt perhaps, side to side. Again, just maintaining mobility. And then just to finish up here, feet a little wider than your hips, we'll take our um, kind of second version of pulling prana, which is to come forward and then back. And you could go even a little wider with your feet if you want to. So inhale and then palms up as you exhale. Let's do two more. Inhale and exhale. Bring feet a little closer together, extend the arms down towards the earth, stand nice and tall. And if you would just take a moment, kind of scan your body. And by now you have a sense of how you're feeling during the practice and maybe how your balance is going today. So we'll do our uh, more or less 10 seconds of standing on one leg and then the other as recommended by the article in the New York Times. <laughs> and to keep it um, interesting today, we'll do a couple different mudras, okay? So use the wall or chair if you need to, but if you wanna try it with the hand gestures, I'll tell you what they are. We're gonna start with one leg lifted prayer position. Lotus mudra, the pinky and thumbs touch, the three middle fingers are apart. Mountain mudra. And then finally, boo mudra. It's like a peace sign, but the fingers come together and we direct the fingertips down to the earth. Okay, so that's for grounding and centering. And I'm just gonna say that's about 10 seconds. Okay, so we'll try it to the second side. Lifting your leg. I'm turning a little bit so you can see, I guess what I'm doing. So prayer position. Lotus mudra. Mountain mudra, kind of your thumbs up position. Makes the 10 seconds go by quickly, right? <laughs> and then boo mudra, like a peace sign, but the fingers come together, directing those fingertips towards the earth, solid and steady as we are here. And then two feet down, breathe in. We'll do a half sun salute. Bend the legs a little, fold forward as you breathe out. And then come all the way back and we'll take prayer position hands. And a moment to kind of recalibrate. If you're not at the top of the mat, you can move forward a little, standing nice and tall and getting ready for the next uh, phase of the practice, which will include a little bit of a flow, just a very gentle flow today. And from standing mountain pose, we can drop the arms and then lift as we inhale. Swan dive as we exhale, step the right foot back. We'll come on up to Virabhadrasana one. And I'll give you a couple seconds here to kind of get yourself stable and steady. A sense of engaging internally to lift and to open and expand the upper body. And then we'll float and fly today. So this is the one where we come forward. You can cross the arms above your knee like this, or if you're okay going down underneath your leg. And let's keep that going a little bit, breathing in and breathing out. One more time, inhale and exhale. Come all the way back up, Virabhadrasana one. Now we did this combination last week. It's not super strenuous, but it's good for our um, awareness of our bodies, proprioception to go in and out of different poses. So extended side stretch and then right up and back to reverse triangle. Coming back to our warrior one facing towards the front of the mat and then lifting that back foot, stepping it forward 
And we'll be back to standing mountain pose, tall and steady. Taking it to the second side now, everything that we just did to the first side, breathing in, pull forward, breathe out, left foot back, coming up to Virabhadrasana one, and take that time to kind of set yourself up here so you feel stable and steady. And then we'll float and fly. And again, remember, you don't have to go too far down. You can come above the knee if that works for you. Or as you exhale and lower, go all the way down underneath your leg with your hands. And we'll do two more rounds. Inhale. Exhale. One more. Inhale. And exhale. Put it all the way back up and into our extended side stretch. So a little adjustment of the feet. I'm taking the forearm to the thigh, the top arm overhead. Just a couple of seconds here. And then straightening your front leg and stretching back to reverse triangle. And then pivoting back to your warrior one. So again, the flow linking one pose to another. And then we'll step forward to the top of the mat. And we'll take a big circle here, inhale, exhale, and consider if you'd like to stand still or if you'd like to bring the hands behind your back and take a forward fold. And remember, you can always do a half forward fold, maybe lift the arms up off of the back. Some of you may be bringing the head down a little more. I do like to be mindful of the low back and that would uh, involve bending the leg so there's no strain as you take your head down. Move your head, release your neck, and then we'll undo the hands if they're interlaced. We're going to come up to our V for victory pose, but take your time. And then just lift the arms and hold here for a couple seconds. So we're opening to all good things, peace, optimism, encouragement, <laughs> whatever it is that resonates for you today. And then we'll relax the hands down, shake it out a little bit. Um, if you do have a yoga block, you may want it for what's to come. I'll just give you a heads up. We're going to do half moon today, Ardha Chandrasana. And there are different ways to modify for that. But some of you may like to have your yoga block handy. So speaking of the moon, let's get into our horse stance. We can do a little pulsing here and then we'll carry the moon. <laughs> so this is the one where we feel like that bright full moon is in our arms. Okay. And then we'll just do a circle to the side, overhead to the other side and back. And then the way you came is where we'll go next, to the side, overhead, to the other side and back. So let's do once more each direction. Go a little faster pace if you want to. Carrying the moon. All the way back and around. And just hold here for a couple seconds. And relaxing the shoulders with that exhalation, just ah, dropping the shoulders down. Okay, and now we'll do a little diagonal stretch. So I notice I need to kind of adjust my feet a little bit. And this is the one like you're reaching for something that's up and off at an angle there, so side to side. Now I haven't practiced this yet, but I thought about it. Remember how sometimes we come off of one foot ooh, <laughs> as we reach. So you can decide if you're up for that. Certainly keep your toes to the floor if that feels a little more stable and steady for you. Tempting to take flight here. Okay, once more to each side. And then come back, safe landing, breathe in and breathe out. We'll just take a little bit of five pointed star, tuning to the warmth of the body, the sense of our, our chi, our life force energy there. There's sometimes a kind of a sense of tingly uh, sensation in the hands or just warmth in the body. And we'll go from here into Bikram Triangle and you go to your left if you wanna be a mirror image. I'm taking my feet a little wider, I'm bending my legs. If you're a mirror image, it'd be your left leg. And with Bikram Triangle, we come down inside of the knee with the knee remaining bent. So a little bit like triangle, but this leg is not straight as it would be in a traditional trikonasana position. Um, some folks like to bring their fingertips all the way down to the floor, even in between the big toe and the second toe. Okay, we'll take a couple more seconds here. 
And then we'll come up now like a counter stretch, which would be the reverse triangle. So we're reaching back. And then our Bikram triangle to the second side. Okay, so coming down, you don't have to go very far. You can go inside of the knee, but if you do want to slide down towards the floor or even to your big toe and your second toe, if you can get down that far. And steady breath. And then we'll bring ourselves back up. We'll take our reverse triangle. And let's pause for a moment before we continue on. We'll just come back to five pointed star. Inhale and exhale. And just tune once more to your body. Just check in with how you're feeling. And then you can decide if you'd like to repeat the Bikram triangle or possibly with the yoga block, come into Ardha Chandrasana Half Moon. And I always have to show this here <laughs> in my little yoga room. You can do Half Moon with some furniture, which is kind of a really nice option. You don't have to go all the way down to the floor or to your block. Um, again, you could repeat Bikram Triangle. So that may be something that feels best for some people. And then for the block option or hand to the floor, we'll take the hand down outside of the pinky toe. Now we have to watch out for furniture. It's handy, but then of course it can get in the way. So I'm gonna show the half moon with my yoga block here. I'm extending my top arm up. I'm flexing my foot that's lifted. So I'm pressing through the heel to really energize through the whole leg. Okay, I'm gonna come down carefully. You can stay longer or add variations if you want to. And definitely give yourself time to recalibrate here. And then decide how you feel about round two. So again, some furniture would work nicely. <laughs> that would be a possibility. Um, returning to Bikram triangle is an option. And then for those going down to the floor to a yoga block, your hand will come outside of your pinky toe. And I'm moving away from that sharp edge of the shelf there. So I don't feel intimidated. <laughs> Taking myself up, Ardha Chandrasana. So of course it's a balance, but it's also strengthening and it's a very expansive position. And we've done quite a few poses today to open and expand. So hopefully this is a good continuation of that. And stay longer if you want to, add a variation if you want to. When you're ready to come out, breathe in. Breathe out, we'll still be perhaps in our five pointed star. But since we've had the legs wide for a while, let's heel, toe, step, or hop the feet together. And then just pause for a moment. Once more, feel the warmth of the body. Come back to your intention or affirmation if you have one. And then we'll shake things out a little. Now we've done some uh, balancing already today and um, a forward fold. So you could take any final stretch, pose, or movement to complete the practice that you would like. Uh, you could also join me just for a moment or two of a chi wash. So I like to look at some um, nice plants out there or possibly some artwork if there's something that resonates with you. Just to feel a sense of peace, of calm, of well-being washing over you, through you and around you at this moment. Okay. And then we will be coming down to the floor to a seated position. Uh, so have a sip of water if you'd like, and then we'll come on down for our holiday special roly-poly rock and roll, <laughs> only if you care to. Um, as you come down, you can definitely sit and do a little more circling as we did at the start of the practice. If you think you may want to rock and roll, watch that there's nothing behind you. No little puppy dog sneaking onto your yoga mat. So two, three, or four times. Back and forth. And then we'll take a moment or two here. So I thought we would take a seated twist at this phase of the practice today. And I'm gonna go uh, to the version with the legs crossed. I just wanna mention, if you want something a little more gentle, you could have the legs bent like this, um, sort of knees off to the side. But the version that many of you have been doing for years and years and years with me and probably other yoga instructors, would be one leg bent and possibly one leg straight. And I'm putting my right leg over my left. It doesn't matter which side you do because we'll do the twist to both directions. Um, see what you think about bending both legs. That may work for some people. 
and <laughs> we take a moment or two just to kind of adjust and uh, decide if we do want to have both legs bent. Now with my right leg on top, I'm going to reach my left arm up, breathing in, and then rotating, you can wrap the arm around your knee or take the elbow to the knee. So if you're a mirror image, you would have your left leg on top and your right arm would be coming to the knee. Now my hand to the floor behind is pressing into the ground to help me to elongate the spine. And I'm just gonna find my rotation here, my twist. If your neck is okay with it, you can look back over your back shoulder. We'll unwind, keep the legs in whatever uh, position you have them in and just take a quick counter stretch to the other direction. And then today I'm gonna to have us undo the legs and before the second side, just stretch out the legs, point and flex the toes. We didn't do that earlier. We'll take a round of the wave, bending the legs and breathing in, coming forward, breathing out. Up and around, good, straighten out the legs. This is our staff or stick pose that we did earlier. And then coming to the second side of our seated twist. So please take what feels best for your body today. Um, so definitely both legs bent as I showed you, dropping the knees off to the side, one leg bent, one leg straight. This is a pretty good way to go for a lot of folks. Or possibly maybe we'll see how we feel. <laughs> Both legs bent. Okay, it always takes a little moment here to adjust and decide it's where we want to be. Now on this side, I have my left leg bent. So I'm going to reach my right arm up, breathing in. And you can wrap the arm around your knee as you breathe out or hook the elbow to the knee. Use the fingertips to the floor behind you to help elongate the spine. And just find your twist. If your neck agrees to it, look over your back shoulder. I think the steady breath, I talk about it a lot, but in the seated twist, it's particularly important because it really helps us just to feel that we're kind of um, softening into this deep stretch, really relaxing the muscles, at the same time kind of stimulating the uh, digestive system and the internal organs. We'll unwind, just take a quick counter stretch to the other direction. And back to center, uncross the legs. Same as before, a little shake and then maybe a little point and flex of the toes. And then we will take a forward fold here, which is really good to do after twisting. Um, if you have your yoga block, you could take your wide legged forward fold, maybe bring your head down to the block. Um, many of you will likely have straight legs. As you know, I like to bend. Uh, and have a little modification here in the forward fold. So I'm just gonna come down with my forehead to my stacked hands on the yoga block. Um, if you prefer soles of the feet together, bound angle, you could take that. Paschimottanasana, which would be both legs out in front. Well, let's take about five or six deep breaths here. And just after all the varied movements we've done, just let the body adjust, feel a sense of calm, just kind of washing over you and through you. And you can stay in your forward fold a little longer if you care to, but the next phase of things will be coming up and coming back onto our backs for just a few final moves before our well-deserved relaxation. So as you come out of your forward fold, just take your time coming down onto the floor again, maybe that pillow under your head. And we'll bring the knees in, we'll rock a little bit, just massage the lower back. Let's lift the arms and legs and do our freestyle movement here. Keeping everything supple and flexible as we want it to be. And then this also is a repeat from, um, I guess it was maybe Friday. <laughs> Sorry to keep the day straight, but we're just gonna do a few toe touches uh, <clears throat> to conclude things today on our backs. So for the toe touches, we lift the legs. I like to press through the balls of the feet. We extend the arms, breathe in. And as we exhale, we really use core and also pelvic floor muscles to help us to lift and then release. Okay, so we'll do somewhere around four or five of these as if you're going to touch your fingers to your toes. I'm going to do four <laughs> because there's a second version here. So I'm going to save a little steam for that. 
So that's going to be the um, version with the legs straight. And you can flex your feet here and once more engage not only the core, but the pelvic floor muscles. As you exhale, you're going to extend your arms through your legs and release down. So inhale, exhale. Four or five rounds, more if you want to. And then quite nice is to just finish with happy baby, bend your legs. You can bring your hands to your thighs, to your shins, or to the outer edges of your feet. Rock a little bit. And then just consider what would feel good to finish your practice today. You could come down, soles of the feet together, tucking the tailbone a little bit for a nice relaxing bound angle. We've already done some twisting, so you may want to repeat the twist. Um, of one sort or another um, that we've done today or something different. You may want to go to bridge pose or shoulder stand. So I'm just gonna move a little bit and let everyone decide what would feel best for their bodies. Sometimes just lifting the legs, you can move the feet. And this position is great. If you do have your yoga block nearby, I always like to lift the legs when the hips are lifted a little bit onto the block. Super relaxing for the lower back. We'll have you continue just for another moment or two with the poses or stretches that help you to feel complete in the practice today. And when you feel ready, just beginning to come down onto your back for our well-deserved relaxation. I like to underscore well-deserved <laughs> because we always go through a lot of different movements and there's a quite a thought process as well, concentration to uh, take our bodies into these different positions. So this time to just come into stillness in the body and the mind is so important. Maybe cover your eyes, maybe cover your feet, put a pillow under your head. And close your eyes. Once you're comfortable, you can take a nice full breath in. Exhale and release. And try that again, full breath in. And release. And if you can really relax the belly here, coming into belly breathing where the belly just rises and falls with the breath knowing that there's nothing at this time that we need to fix or figure out, nothing to accomplish or achieve. We'll just take this time in stillness and silence to digest what we've done, to refresh and refuel at a deep level. So there's nothing more, simply enjoying the time now to drop back, to release, to relax and to let go completely. Take a little more time here, still connected, but appreciating the stillness, the tranquility within and around us. And then without moving, we can just shift our awareness to become aware again of our bodies, heavy on the earth, making in this nice sense of calm that we've arrived at. And then as you feel ready, just slowly begin to move fingers and toes, hands and feet. So you just come back gently, you can move your head a little bit, make some sound if you want to. And then come over to one side. Maybe you brought the knees in towards the chest first just to kind of rock a little side to side. But you could then come over to one side and carefully back on up to seated. I'll give everyone time here to just get themselves um, into the seated position, blinking and adjusting to the light for a couple moments. 
Okay, and then let's just go ahead and uh, take a final little deepening of the breath here, but in a very gentle fashion. So similar to what we do at the start of the practice, lifting up, breathing in, just a gentle tuck of the chin, gently fisted hands as we breathe out. We'll do that two more times, but in quite a relaxed fashion. Inhale, exhale. And then lift the arms up for final few moments. Breathe in, bring the hands together to prayer. Breathe out, bring the hands to the heart. And we'll take a few final moments here. You could close the eyes if you'd like. So this is a great chance to take in the good energy that we've generated and also to come back to our intentions or affirmations. Perhaps a feeling of encouragement. Good job. It's going great. <laughs> Peace of compassion, whatever resonates. And then with hands at the heart, we're gonna close the practice today with one round of OM. And I'll suggest if you're uh, in real time with me, keep your microphone off since I am attempting to record this today. So Zoom will not get confused <laughs> with multiple images of people. Uh, but hands at the heart. And uh, if you would like to join me at home on mute, please do. We'll inhale to begin. Oh. Om Shanti, Shanti, peace. And as messengers of peace, let's bow the head to the heart to acknowledge the light, the energy, the peace within. And then a moment to lift our gaze to honor the light, energy, and peace within one another with a namaste to all. Namaste. Enjoy this day. I hope it's a good one, a peaceful one. And I'll see you soon. <laughs>